couple of minutes, they were extremely eventful. It was, um, I was like, oh yeah, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. And, and I realized like, oh wait, this Sunday, I'm going to be going to Boston for like a family event. So I'm like, I'm going to go to the Museum of Science before I go there. And so literally like I had my daughter and we were like singing and dancing around for a couple of minutes because I was, I'm a nerd and love the Museum of Science, even though I've been like a thousand times. So as soon as that's done, I come in here and I'm like, oh, if these die out on me, I am my earbuds, couldn't find them. Oh wait, they're outside. So I go outside to get them. I see a snake squeal, squeal like, like a, a very young little girl. Uh, <laughs> um, realize it's a garter snake triple over my embarrassment of myself and uh and and then got my earbuds and come running back up here i'm like oh man i'm out of breath now yeah, it was uh welcome back yeah. everybody i was like that was it that was eventful great 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 uh intro to week 22 yeah. here of yeah. edge of morality I mean, how are you feeling man you feeling uh all exercised uh from from running up a flight of stairs no no i i do i do, I do not but um yeah, that was fun. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Hello, What's everybody? up? Welcome. Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome, Hi. welcome, welcome back. Week 22, Lost Initiative, Edge of Morality. Before we get into anything at all anything. and talking about people's days, we got a, f a few announcements to make uh, that are important, and uh, we'll repeat them at the end of the show as well in case people show up late. First and foremost, this show, the Wednesday show, is being moved. We are moving it to Tuesdays what? starting next week. Same time. 6 p.m. Uh, PST, so 9 p.m. EST, and then figure out your time zones from there. Uh, we apologize for the move, but it was the only way to keep all of us playing and not have to lose somebody and then replace them. Whoa, we whoa, whoa, whoa. I am not sorry about the move at all. If the option was lose one of these people well, that's what I'm saying. or that, move that was, the show, I am not sorry about that. That's what I I'm saying. Good. I'd rather I, – it was our option to keep everybody, and we don't want to lose anybody. Yeah. The, the party it, works too well together. This is a great show. So. And then and it, and it, if anybody's upset as to why it is we have to move, the, the actual reason is because something came up in Mathis's life. Oh, and yeah. He needs to go and take care of that. So it was either lose Thunk or or, or move the show. And we, we chose to keep Thunk because we all love Thunk here. Correct. So. Uh, other than that, um, we've got a bunch of new emotes in the works. So for subscribers, get ready for that. Hopefully within a week or so, it'll depend on when we get uh, the sketches and finalize everything. Um, and I think that's about it. All the banners on the bottom were redone, by the way. There's like a donation button now if you want to, if you want to throw money our way. Um, but other than that, I think we're good. We are ready to play. And I kind of just want to dive into it because Sam has a werewolf pet. So I'm excited to see how that ends up going. Whoa, whoa, pet? That's a little, is that, is that racist? Is that, is that a thing? Scott, is if that... anything has happened, no. it's been racism that's against racist. orcs. This that's whole racist. <sighs> Uh, I think you'll find that Addo and myself have suffered nothing but racism at the hand of orcs. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, <laughs> oh, and like, I haven't had any orc racism happen to me. Right? Oh, no, exactly. you've just had orc ladies hitting on you nonstop. <laughs> oh. Are people trying to Such kill a... me because I'm an orc? So you Such get prejudice. You get orc racism against you when you're out in the wild, but when we're anywhere civilized and we have to deal with people, we get the shit under the stick. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I'm sorry. I, I I had another funny thing happen today since we're talking about orcs and whatnot. Um, uh, my my mother and I were talking about uh, orcs, and she was like, "Well, all orcs are ugly," and I was like, "Mom, that's like a stereotype. You can't do I that." that you were gonna, <laughs> this was going to be a segue into talking about how your mother is an orc. Oh, God. <laughs> but well, then you were actually talking well, about orcs with your mother. Well, you know, <laughs> didn't see that coming. I was like, I was like, this is a clever witty segue. And he's bashing his mother. <laughs> you guys are just, you're just talking about orcs. Actual conversation. I, I was raised by, we're, we, we are all nerds. So, so we're having a conversation. She's like, no, all orcs are ugly. I was like, mom, mom Google, just simply Google attractive orc D&D. Uh, &D. You mm -hmm. know, you just Google that. And Done. she literally Googled it. And then all of a sudden she's like, ooh, oh. Oh yeah. Oh, well, oh, well, look I, at see, that one. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> it's like, I can't mom. trust internet <laughs> internet drawings because there are drawings out there of planes having like. Sure, sure, insane. sure, sure. But you know what? That doesn't change the fact that somebody imagined it. It existed in their game. Therefore, there was an attractive half orc. It's called Rule Thirty Four. Yep. Of course. Of course it is. So, um, that all being said, uh, let's see. Where were we? What happened last time? I don't know. This is your job. <sighs> I don't remember really stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So last time we had, um, oh, damn. 
Last time we had left the city and started traveling. And then during the travels, you, uh, where was it? You had go, had to go through the Lurkwood. So in going through the Lurkwood, let's see, you came across a, uh, like a, a mushrooms, magic mushrooms along the way. You came across a pit of um, some not so, uh, was it a, a bog? Sorry, like a sinking bog. My brain's now kicking in. Mm-hmm. So you came across a sinking bog that was pulling Otto down. He was, of course, the person that fell into both of those traps because he was, uh, let's just say, trying to have fun. Uh, him and Grauman had a conversation or at least started a conversation about, let's just say, covering old details and making sure things were good. Um, what else is there? Uh, after all that was done, you guys kind of like traveled around for some more. You bumped into some orcs, kind of like showed your superiority over them, uh, fought a little bit, uh, came across a group of humans. You're like, hey, these are humans. They look like they give you. No- nope, no, nope, they don't like you. They don't like you because they're orcs. Uh, no, you're, no. you're orcs. I'm sorry. It's just how it goes. Like two of you could have been okay ish, maybe. Great example. Yeah, I was going to say that's uh, an excellent example. Any, I think uh, there's listen. any situation where all four of us are like, Good. Accepted? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, not one, like one person know, group isn't fucking down. You want to know when we're all accepted, Rye? When we're all together. In the Aww. heat of, in the yeah, heat of battle. <laughs> in the heat of battle. When we're murdering those who disagree with us. <laughs> um. So, the. Well, I mean, if you literally Google Grey Wolf Tribe, okay, just Google Grey Wolf Tribe, it literally says in there, uh, like, ancient enemy or arch enemy orcs. I mean, I'm like, well, yeah. I Googled Mirabar. I didn't see anything about orc racism in the lower city, though, so. Uh, Okay, well, you know, you just just take a dwarven city and you just just bring its feelings forward and (laughs) shut up about this. So um, you guys bump into them. You have a a conversation to go south. Rye effectively nukes the boss and completely obliterates him. There was a little bit of assistance, but it wasn't showy enough to be something that really stands out. So Rye like nukes the boss, which is amazing. And somebody tried to surrender at the end, but Rye got, was it whispers? Had convinced Rye to keep this person. Yeah. Um, they were telling you that uh, he's somebody that wants to learn. You just got to be willing to teach him. So here you are, you have the opportunity to teach somebody um, which I believe their name is Axel the Slayer, right? Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Axel Axel the Slayer, you have the opportunity to teach this person uh, whatever it is that you can to uh, get whatever benefit you, you can out of it. I know that um, Thonk was probably looking to kill him or scar him for life, literally and mentally, but now Thonk has his... Well, uh, now Thonk has his own little pet. That he can, I don't have a um, pet. Rye has a pet, not that me. He can have fun with. Like, oh, I don't have to make, you know, Otto's life miserable. I can I can mess with somebody else instead. I don't mess with Grauman the party. What was that, uh, Maggie? Thank you. I said, Grauman has new friend. Grauman has new friend, yes. Oh. <laughs> so um, uh, that all being said, this could be fun. Uh, could everybody do me a favor? Kebabs. Mm. Could everybody, um, wait, is that everybody? One, two, three. Um, nah, let's see, it was definitely Rye, definitely Grauman. Rye and Grauman make me constitution saves with advantage. Oh, these are the people that got hit during the battle. Maybe. Oh, oh you really, oh, that's unfortunate. I see what's happening here. So it's not natural. No. It's, uh, <laughs> spreadable. That's unfortunate. Thank God, just- Rye. Wow, kicking it off with a natural 20. Like always. In like pure stripping always. fashion. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, awesome. Man, well, what a um, werewolf tiefling. You'd be all effed up. What, what, why does a werewolf tiefling have to be anything any different from werewolf human? Because be tieflings werewolf? are effed up in general. Wait, can ah. I reroll again? <laughs> can I reroll? Can I just fail? Can I fail so I can be a werewolf? You might no, not you're... get werewolf, though. You might just get really sick. Yeah. I might, I might not agree with you because you know they are a tribe of people that hates orcs, and you're a half orc, so maybe it'll just kill the you know the half of you. I'm so, so, so strong. Yeah, so strong, so strong that you re- resisted the disease, which is wonderful, awesome. So kudos to you guys. A 18 and a 22. It's funny you got double 18s. So um, I guess we want to get right into this. So you guys were traveling along, and he gave you a little bit of guidance to make sure that you finished finding the way that you're pretty much already taken care of on your own. Uh, I think it, it was described as Otto's intelligence and Grauman's intuition, uh, or how it is that you guys have found your way through this place to get to where you are now. Where you are now being 
the Fell Pass. Now, the Fell Pass, what is it? Um, Spine of the World is a mountain range that runs along most of the north of Faerun. Uh, there are a few little, uh, what is it, um, north to south, like uh, parts that like peninsulas that come off of it. Sorry if my ge my geographical phrasing is a little off, but little peninsulas that come off of it uh, in north to south as opposed to going east to west. And this happens to be one of them. And it is a very thick uh, and very broad area of the mountain. It runs very tall. There's a, a, a chasm or a pass that runs through the mountain known as the Fell Pass. Uh, it's an old, old, old ancient pass. What was explained to you was the reason why it's known as the Fell Pass is because there's countless battles of, of orcs and dwarves that have uh, fought here over the course of eons and eons and eons. And it has left behind um, tons of skeletons and whatnot behind. It's said that the area is actually infested with uh, undead. So you don't have to worry about typical monsters or the like. So you might think, oh, maybe we should try our, like, uh, our luck on the, the actual like cliffs above the pass as opposed to going through it itself. Well, one, that is just the terrain alone, significantly more treacherous than the pass itself would be, just again, terrain alone. But then you mix in with the monsters are uh, are there, what they're able to do, God forbid, you're fighting a giant and he literally just knocks you into the pass and then you're down there anyways by yourself. Uh, it's it, it was literally considered uh, suicide to go above and just stupid to come below. And of course you guys chose to, to travel through the pass itself. And we had ended last session with you guys actually coming up to the pass and getting ready to walk through it. Now, I know typically every session we start off with uh, some shenanigans, um, head by you, Bear, um, uh, usually spending the first hour either drunk or doing something absolutely ridiculous. We don't hey, have- not every session, man, okay? I don't have a problem. I can stop whenever I want. <laughs> sure, I'm, uh, absolutely. absolutely. How's that spell coming along? What is it, intervention? How's, how's that? <laughs> That's a level um, four, I think, for Otto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, what was I saying? The since you're not going to be able to do your typical shenanigans, I figured I would ask. We know that Sam's favorite princess is Rapunzel. Bear, what is your favorite Disney princess? Uh the princess from Princess and the Frog. Oh, Tiana, I think it is. Is it Tiana? I think That's it's Tiana. Right. Yeah. yeah. There you How go, can Tiana. Be your favorite, if you can't even remember her name. It's the stats. Question, but I remember the movie particularly. To be fair, that pretty much all referred to as just princess. True. In every Disney movie. Mm -hmm. So I'll let I think, I think really, it's... she doesn't start out. Oh, whatever. I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> wow. wow. We got <laughs> a princess period show. in here. <laughs> oh, man. So, Maggie, is Princess Leia Disney princess or no? Technically, I guess now she right. is. Yeah, totally. But, but she doesn't fit into the category of being an animated princess, isn't that? Okay, we're not going to do this. <laughs> just, this is, well, this that's is just... true. You didn't t say animated princess. So, someone could say Princess Leia. Or Leia, so I suppose. Depends on how, how Puritan you want to be, but I, I'm not, this is easily a rabbit hole. We could go down for a long while. So um, we have Rapunzel and we have Tiana moving on. Uh, you guys are now entering the Fell Pass itself and start traveling through it. To get through the pass is actually takes several days. And that makes it an extremely intimidating thing to do. It's, it's not safe here. So um, uh, how is it you guys choose to make your way through the pass? What, what um, precautions do you try to take to make things, you know, Run smoothly. I'm reading something right now. Just give me a minute. Mm -hmm. So not you, gotcha. <laughs> we uh, got, um, well, I mean, you got those climbing tools, but I mean, that's probably not gonna give us much help going through the pass. Um, that, I mean, actually they will. So one of the things I can say when, it, when it, I was going to say when we got to it, there are going to be many chunks of the area where it's considered rough terrain or you move at half speed, making your way through the, the areas. There are going to be some places where it's like, no, it's a wall. And it's not like it's a smooth area uh, for you to get through. It's like, okay, we can go the smoother route, but uh, it doesn't look safe over there. Let's go the not so smooth route because the, the chasm itself or the pass itself, it's not like some super narrow thing. It's actually extremely extremely wide, an extremely wide area. It's a point where like wars were, were theoretically fought here. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> this has been implied up to this point, but Otto does, you know, perform his uh, song of empowerment or whatever the hell it is, the, uh, the, the, the boost, the blessing. 
A absolutely he does that's uh that's definitely his thing so he does that getting through but does anybody like want to take that i'm sorry maybe i'm not being explicit enough uh a a a specific enough um does anybody want to like say take the lead is there any like other yeah. actions you guys want to do to get through there like uh you're Grauman, dealing with uh forces going, you're not familiar with Grauman's gonna take a stick find mm -hmm. like a big stick and use it as a walking stick mm -hmm. and he's gonna walk and march forward stay you're gonna stay up front is what you're saying Otto will follow oh, Maya. immediately behind Grauman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Maya. Meow. Hang on, I'm gonna mute my mic. Wow, kitty. Matha sucks. Oh shit, he muted Maya. Fuck, misjudged that one, didn't I? <laughs> uh, so I was, I realized I wasn't even logged into Twitch, and now it's actually giving me an issue logging in. Now I'm just going, eh, I just won't be a part of chat. That's okay. I don't need to be there anyways. All right, so um we'll talk smack. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so you guys are just gonna kind of go about your typical routine aside from like the extra walking stick that Robin has with him. Um, we're gonna kind of go about things the normal way. Awesome. Yeah, I think we approached prepared, man. We don't need to dilly dally. We're ready for this shit. Well, I mean, yeah. what do, what do we know out out of character? What do we know about this pass other than like what you just said? It's literally pretty much just what you said because that guy that's traveling with you only knew up into the past and told you all the things that I just described to you. So okay. you you know that it's going to be riddled with the undead for whatever that's worth, um, or theoretically is riddled with undead for whatever that's worth, and that this is actually still safer than the mountains above, which you kind of kind of were contemplating should we do one or the other, and um, <clears throat> that's that's pretty much it. And it's the safest and quickest way to get to the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I guess. Yeah, we'll just continue with the guys walking through. So, as I said, it's not a quick pass. It's not uh, the, the mountain range here is not very thin, so you have to make your way through there. It is a treacherous, uh, a treacherous travel. Uh, this has not been really used for um, transportation of goods in a long time, so it's not like there's smooth paths for wagons to go through. Though, there are still like stair spots from time to time. There are still like areas where it does still feel comfortable to to travel through because of what has been left over from ages long past. So as you guys are making your way through the past, uh, it becomes very apparent very quickly that there are really no natural sounds here. As a matter of fact, um, it, it's so quiet here. It's so unusually quiet that uh, Grauman can make me an insight check with advantage really quickly. I'm not good at insights. Even Grauman can notice that uh, his bird, um, what, what's his name, like uh, eagle eye, feather face, beak butt, or something like that, uh, whatever is it, oh, Grauman, um, so what, what, the, the bird is like acting strange, you know what I mean, it, it seems, this is a bird of prey, this is a creature that is generally not afraid of anything, it owns the skies, so on and so forth, it seems to be intimidated it seems to be quiet almost like hiding behind Grauman um you're actually uh at some point in time it does actively get up and it, like try to leave and Grauman has to call the thing back to him so Grauman could you make for me a handle animal check okay I need to probably level this up <laughs> I'm excited for this I'm sorry I missed the how do I level that up anyway? What do I need to spend to get? I guess I have to use instead of getting a feat, I increase the skill or something. Uh, instead of getting a feat, you can actually choose to grab three skills with a different feat. You know what I mean? So, and there, there's other things you can do too, but yeah. we'll worry about that another time. So, handle animal of eleven. Uh, the first time that the bird wants to leave, it, it does stay with you. But this is not the only check you're going to make. The thing is clearly very uncomfortable. And the deeper into the chasm you go, the more intimidated this bird seems. As a matter of fact, every one of you um, feels this like overwhelming pressure of like doom or gloom, this like dark and, and evil feeling. And um, uh, I mean, since he's not here, uh, Thonk literally pissed himself uh, at one point in time. Like he was, he was so scared, he literally just kind of like pissed himself. And it was this awkward moment where Grauman kind of like came around the corner and like saw this awkward expression on Thonk's face. It was like, what's that? And he was just, like, uh, um, instinctively looked down and Grauman noticed the puddle and he was like, uh, and like Grauman left it alone. You know what I mean? And, and that just kind of like is quiet between the two of you. Okay. What happened? No. Um, <laughs> but so, so anyways, you, Listen, you I'm guys... picking up cat puke. What happened? Oh, yum. 
<laughs> yeah. So just give me, give me one hand. Uh, you pissed yourself out of fear. Yeah. So. Yep. Well, that happened. <laughs> So, so it's, it's a very uncomfortable place for you guys to be traveling through. So as you go through the first day into the place, kind of like looking around, just being aware and whatnot, you don't see anything out of the ordinary aside from that weird, um, uh, overwhelming feeling that I keep describing to you. Um, it, it's not until that first night that you guys are there uh, when you're setting up your watches. And if I remember correctly, it was Cleric first, Otto last, and then I went uh, Grom and then Rye. So, Mathis, could you roll for me really quickly a d4? Sure. Are you talking about the order that we were going in? Yep, I know Adol's was last and Grom and, and uh, uh, Thonk is first. No, I thought Grom is actually. I was that's right behind Grom. No, we Thonk is first. Okay, that's fine. Yep. All right. All right. Thonk, Rai, Grom, and Adol. <laughs> I'm going first. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, just... I rolled a three. <laughs> so that's actually Grom's turn. So it's not until it's Grauman's watch that Grauman starts to notice something strange. You don't even have to make a passive perception or anything like that. Uh, sorry, perception check for me or anything like that, Maggie. It's just simply you hear uh, a, a strange noise coming off in the distance. It, it, it sounds like um, it, it's really hard to make out at first, but kind of like really focusing on it because everything's so quiet right now. Really focusing on it for a bit. Um, all of a sudden, you, you make out the familiar sound of metal on metal, like clashing of metal on metal. And so, you know, would Grauman want to go and try to get a better look? Would he keep quiet to himself? Would he want to wake anybody up? Or How far it, it, away does it sound? It's far enough away that the sound of middle and middle is very, very faint. Um, and you're inside of a chasm where things would echo, and there's no ambient noise aside from maybe the wind. Okay, time and my, time. My, my eagle bro is not... He's with you, and he might do things if you ask him to, but it's not going to be easy to convince him. Gotcha. Well, I don't want him to get hurt. I'll tell you right now, Maggie, uh, you would have to make a handle animal check to ask him to do it. Uh, if you choose to cast speak with animals, I'll give you an advantage on that handle animal check right now. Uh, if you choose to use the, the bird, or you could not. Uh, I guess I can try to coerce him, if, and then if he's not interested, then I'll... I'll you punch him in the face? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> was uh, 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 oh. <laughs> ah. So... You, you have words of the bird. Uh, describe what do you say to an eagle uh, or falcon or hawk, or I think it's an eagle. What do you say to an eagle? Yeah, that's right, it's an eagle. What do you say to an eagle to convince it? Uh, don't worry about these like undead feeling things that you've got. Go flying. What do you say? Uh, Grumman hears the noise and he's like, I hear noise. We must see what it is. Can you go look? <clears throat> um. It, the, the, the bird will agree to it. Um, it. It doesn't seem happy, but it's willing to help you out. So of course you're gonna cast your to see through its eyes uh, mm -hmm. ability. So that's you know, 20 minutes in total to do the two different spells. And um, you send the bird off to go and start looking at things so you can see through its eyes. All right. Is that because you're carving the bird or? <laughs> yeah, I was just. Um, no, so I, you got, you bird, uh, got... send the bird off to go kind of like looking off into the distance and, and seeing, however, Eagles don't have dark vision. They don't have the ability to see very well at night, like say if it was an owl or something like that. So it does have a hard time seeing. Could you do me a favor and roll me a perception check with disadvantage using the bird's perception? Okay. Bird, 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 bird. Here's your perception, yo. Oh. It's like unusually quiet right now. Whoa! Oh, Natty 20, that's awesome. No, you guys are very quiet. Disadvantage, it, so. Did I lose sound or something? I used, you no. sound fine. Hmm? Yep, I think I lost sound. I figured that would happen. <laughs> did he say that's disadvantage why. or advantage? Disadvantage. Yeah, I disadvantage. knew that was going to happen. That's why I was like, oh, I'm just going to grab these earbuds just in case and get attacked by a snake. Now, let me tell you guys and... my top three least favorite things about Scott in detail, because I've All been right. holding on to this opportunity for quite, oh, yeah. oh hey, All here right. we go. Doing. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, oh man, Logitech just does not like Apple. It's like staticky and shitty. I just, ugh, it's, it, at Logitech does not like Apple. All right. So, anyways, um, uh, Maggie, I'm sorry. You had rolled a natural twenty. Did you say something about afterwards? It was a disadvantage, so she had another roll. I asked roll. if it was a disadvantage or advantage, but oh, I don't think it was a disadvantage. So I think the eight is my actual. Roll. I did say disadvantage because you're inside dark, inside a darker area, and so is a total of an eight. So the bird goes off, flying around, seeing what it can see. Sadly, it does not see anything for you. However, uh, you do hear 
uh, a bunch of noises. You do hear the clashing of metal on metal, but it's very silent. It's literally, you hear metal on metal, uh, every once in a while the sound of the winds, but also another strange noise. Could you do me a favor, roll me an intelligence check, but again, with advantage because of um, uh, familiarity. Intelligence for the bird. Uh, the bird is a two int. So no, this is your intelligence, Maggie. Oh, intelligence. So not much higher. It's like a, like a four or something. <laughs> With advantage, you said? Please and thank you. <laughs> yeah. I have a seven. <laughs> <laughs> I have Called another nice. two in. <laughs> Called it. Um, so, so sadly, you hear another strange, like rattling noise, but you're not sure what it is. You're not from like it, it sounds familiar to you, but you just can't put your your giant thumb on it. So, um, sadly, that's that's where it stands. Is you cannot see it. You hear almost no sounds of the strange rattling. Definitely the sound of metal on metal, and there's a good amount of it. And then every once in a while, the sound of the wind making its way through the chasm or, or pass. Um, that's all you're able to get, Grom. And what do you choose to do? Um, I wait to make sure the bird coming back safely. It does. And then um, I'm going to wake up, I don't know, whoever's near me. Okay. Try or something. Sure. Receptive, right? No. No? But I mean, I you can wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> My perception is really fucking bad. But oh. You can wake me up if you want. OK, maybe Otto. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, it makes sense for Grauman to wake up Otto, actually. Um, Grauman kind of like pokes Otto. And he's like, Otto. What? I hear clanking and rattling. Yeah, just, just like normally or now? I mean, now. Is normal not now? <laughs> he's a little out of it. Um, sorry. Yeah. Uh, where? Grandma just like points the direction of where he hears it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Otto looks. Do I see anything in the uh, direction Grandma is pointing? Uh, no, you do not. Um, do you spend, because you're, you're so groggy. I'm no. actually going to make you roll me a perception check. And sadly, <laughs> I'm going to make you roll it with disadvantage. Okay. Because uh, you're, you're just waking up. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, with your seven, you don't have no idea what Grauman's talking about. Okay. I don't, I don't. I don't see anything. Are you sure? I know see something. I just hear. Huh. Otto's like you know, kind of just disinterested, not really taking it seriously. I mean, keep keep an eye out, I guess. <laughs> Grauman like. Puts out his arm and Sir Fancy Feathers. This, this is what the chat's naming him. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, Sir lands, Fancy Feathers. Oh man. We're gonna we're gonna name him every week. It's gonna be great. Oh, uh, lands on my on my arm and I'm like, you tell him. And I say to the bird. And the bird's like screeches at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh looks at the bird after it screeches at me. What? He say he don't see anything either. Oh. Well, nothing to worry about then, right? I don't know. I don't feel good about this. Mm -hmm. Maybe we wake others. Agreed. I'm going to go oh. get Thonk. You're going to get Thonk? I'll get right in. Okay. So you guys go over and wake him up respectively. Uh, thonk is much easier to wait, so we'll do um, Otto and Thonk first. Mm. I go up and I just kind of kick Thonk's boot. Uh, sure, yeah. I don't think he'd be that nice to you, but you know. <laughs> Usually I just push <laughs> my foot in your chest. Uh, no, I just uh, you kind of like a, a grunt and uh, open my eyes and lift my head and just make mm. eye contact with you with like a raised eyebrow. Grauman says he hears something. And Thonk pushes himself up off the ground with, again, another and kind of a moan and a grunt. Mm -hmm. And uh, just looks at uh, Grommin or Otto and say, from which direction? Otto points. I guess I'm going to listen. Um, you have an extremely high passive perception. I know you just woke up, but because it's a 
in 22, um, you can definitely make out that there's sound over there uh, coming from that direction. So focusing on it for like the same minute or so to really focus, you can definitely hear the sound of metal clinging against metal uh, off of the distance and again, occasional gust of wind howling its way through the, uh, through the chasm. And um, uh, you're listening closely and it, it sounds to be a considerable amount of it, but it also sounds to be a good distance away. Um, there are no shouts or war cries or anything like that, things that you might generally expect to come along with it. Uh, it almost sounds like like uh, it could even be like fake, like an illusion or something like that. But, um, it, you know, it, it sounds so faint and so far off and there's like no other accompanying sounds. Well, you we know the rumors of this place, right? Oh, obviously, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you see, you see Thonk focusing really intently, eyes kind of forward from the direction the noise comes. Uh, after, after, like Scott said, about a minute, he'll turn. I'll turn my head to Otto. Sounds like armor, possibly weapons. Faint phantom noises that go along with it. My guess is the rumors are true, and there's undead nearby. Once you start saying that, Otto is like starting to listen harder. He he can hear it ever so faint off in the distance. Um, it, it's not with much detail though. Mm-hmm. Okay, sim similar to how Grauman had heard it originally. Yeah. Uh, Grauman is able to wake up uh, Rye now, however it is that you choose to do so. Um, Grauman just kind of like pulls her cloak over his over her head because she's like this. And he like pokes her in the horn a little. <laughs> Doesn't feel it. He's like curious about it. And then he just kind of like takes her shoulder and kind of like shakes it a little. As you're shaking the shoulder, you do hear like a low growl, Grauman. From her? No, from uh, something nearby. And when you look over in that direction, you remember, oh yeah, there's somebody else with you guys. And he's his eyes are actually opening and they, they have a, a ever so slight shimmer uh, in the darkness looking at you, um, like a raccoon staring through the, the brush. Um, uh, looking at Grumman's you in like the, the faint her. starlight. Grandma's shaking her shoulder, and then he like hears the growl, and he immediately looks over there. Mm -hmm. He's like, "Is this dude not human right now?" No, he's human. But is Grumman's it? Is he him. ever human? <laughs> So um, he's just kind of like watching Grauman and watching the situation. His growl has subsided. Um, does Rai wake up? Yeah, Rai just kind of like sits upright and does like a yawn with like both one eye closed. Mm -hmm. um, Grauman notices she's she's awake and he like, he, he kind of moves back to look over at her, but he's like in the corner of his eye, keeping an eye on the, the other dude, Axel. And he's like, he's like, I hear noise. What kind of noise? Like, like rattling noise. Something not right. Oh, okay. I'm up. See, so I just like shuffle up and start like putting on stuff. All right. Mm -hmm. So you guys start kind of getting up and getting ready or whatever it is. We can go back over to Thonk and Otto and you guys, you're having a conversation over there, please, if you, if you needed to continue. How did you hear that? His hand up to his ear. A trained ear, Otto. In discipline. Something you lack. Uh, I think it's just because you're bigger than me. Thonk doesn't say anything to that. <laughs> Your ears are just bigger than mine. Yeah. <laughs> right, right comes over and you, she goes, I don't hear anything. Yeah, see, it's the big, it's the big people. They can hear it. I mean, we can't. You guys can no hear that? Ah. Oh. What is it, Thonk? Do you know? Sounds like armor. Educated guests, undead of some sort. So do we go toward or away? I say is we it, stay put and see if they're coming closer. Is it the direction we're going or is it back? Direction you're going, direction forward. Does it sound like it's getting closer over time or does it sound like it's getting further? It, it, it does not. There will be little, because time has passed, because Thonk doesn't mind sitting and listening and whatnot. Um, there will be little uh, moments where like, there'll be peaks of volume uh, where it get a little bit louder. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if anybody else would notice that. Maybe Thonk would uh, notice that there's moments where it gets louder, but then it kind of gets back to its normal volume before. But it, it, even as time passes, it doesn't seem to be drawing closer necessarily. Okay. Uh, but there's definitely still this this continual sound happening. 
Uh, so uh, I relay the information that the noise doesn't seem to be getting any closer to us and that it may be best for us to wait it out. Um, I'm assuming Thonk knows about Undead as much as I personally know about Undead. Maybe I, me saying out of game, I don't know too much. Um, Thonk honestly has not had like any experience with Undead whatsoever. So he might have some, you know, uh, old stories told to him or things that he's yeah. read passages, he's read in places, but without firsthand experience, I mean, it's what not like he, he whipped open a uh, monster manual. Yeah, um, Otto, manual. again, it's, he wouldn't necessarily have any of the combative in his arsenal for knowledge. You're both definitely welcome to roll for me a history check to know what it is you do know. But, um, but it, you don't have like, it's one of those things where, um, even though all of us as players and DMs might know this, so spoiler alert, um, Bear, uh, if you fight a troll, you use acid and fire. Everybody knows that. But does your character really know that? Is that meta knowledge? Um, your characters really wouldn't know this unless they've had much firsthand experience. Bear cursed with the fives. <laughs> yeah. oh, wow, I was just looking and seeing that. Holy crap, Bear. You know nothing about undead other than, you know, like, you know that vampires are a thing and that there's specters and the like and that there's zombies and skeletons. You've heard them in, in stories, but you've never encountered one, ever. Um, and most people that you've heard tell stories of encountering them are the same kind of people that tell stories of encountering everything. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, and obviously old odes and whatever. So uh, how about you, Thunk? Did you want to roll or are you just satisfied with what you do don't know? Yeah, I'm just going to kind of role play it out, I guess. Um, okay. Thonk just more or less says that with the experience that we've had here so far, it may just be wait, best to wait until daybreak and see if the noise is subside with the sun. Um, mm -hmm. Going off of, again, just more like thinking of like rumors or fairy tales or, you know, whatever stories get passed along. Thinking day, daylight may not necessarily get rid of them or but either weaken them or maybe they're, they're gone all, all together. And if this is a haunting of some sort, maybe it's you know, tied to a time. Mm -hmm. he's just, he's uh -oh. just, he could just spewing like knowledge, like quote unquote knowledge like that. Uh, very, out. This is like a story time for Grauman. Uh, this is the most boring story you've ever heard because it's Thom telling it. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> he is like, it's like he opened a textbook and he's like, burp, 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 burp. Like a Charlie Brown. Yeah, adult. like Charlie Brown in it. But more or less, <laughs> he's saying the noises aren't coming closer. He suggests waiting until daybreak. Okay, awesome. So, and you guys are able to do exactly what you had just described there, and uh, wait until daybreak to be able to continue moving forward. Um, do I know? Don't notice the noise. Like, darn it. <laughs> do I notice the noise disappear at a particular time? Do they um, ever so disappear? I assume everybody stays up and uh, kind of like on edge, waiting for this. Yes, I definitely mm -hmm. will. Okay. So, so that being said. Um, the next day, a few of you guys are going to be uh, a bit tired. Uh, let's see, the tired ones would be um, Otto would have gotten more than enough sleep because he's last watch. Grauman would be uh, okay. Rai would have just not, just gone down to sleep, so Rai would be uh, hurt the most. And then uh, Thonk is there with. So if we're doing a scale of like one to four, you know, um, like Thonk's feeling of four, sorry, Otto's feeling of four. Rai and Gra um, Thonk are around, sorry, Grauman and Thonk are around to three. Uh, rise around the two, okay? Um, for for sleep and whatnot. I hope that wasn't too convoluted. Now, what's the one to four scale for? <laughs> it was just like like how how tired characters feel. That was that was way yeah, too. I, I thought I understood it before you got into that, and then I was like, "What the hell does that?" Yeah, mean? The, uh, erase that part because apparently I made no sense there. I actually confused myself. So okay. wow, that was bad. All right, so whatever. You guys get what I'm trying to say here. So mm -hmm. you um you're feeling a bit tired. So you the next day it's around sunrise. So, um. The problem is like sun rises here, yes, obviously, um, and but it doesn't really ever pour into the chasm except for like a two and a half, three hour period around high noon where it is pouring straight down into it. But for the most part, if the sun's not directly overhead, there's so many angles um, of the, because the, the walls are so high, they're a couple hundred feet up, that there's it's always shadow down here. So it's after this, uh, the sun has been up for a considerable amount of time. You guys are in the um, mid-spring right now. So sun really gets up there uh, around, like, let's say, 7 in the morning. It starts – it doesn't – it didn't quiet down until, like, 8.30, 9 o'clock a.m. That's how long it took before it really got quiet. Um, 
but finally does does subside and you guys are able to feel like okay this this feels more comfortable and you continue moving it on or whatever it is that you wanted to do um did you have any other questions in that or no mathers i got nothing okay um so um any other scouting or anything like that you guys want to do or you just kind of like okay well that was a thing and let's just keep moving ahead we don't really i mean we don't notice anything else out of the ordinary right everything seems to be up to par uh yeah everything does exactly uh, everything seems to be uh running perfectly fine uh for the most part so you are able to just continue traveling forward if you'd like um one of the things that you will notice uh as you continue moving at this point is the area seems to be littered with uh, bones here and there, things that you did, had never really noticed before. Um, uh, they just didn't really exist prior to now, but there seems to be bones everywhere in this region. So kind of like uh, as you're traveling more and more throughout the course of the day, you're almost like tripping over them, okay? Mm. Um, and uh, looking at the bones and, and trying to see like uh, where it yeah. is that what they- What kind of bones are they? Yep. Like what are uh, the bones of? Um, somewhat of half orcs, some of dwarves. I mean, sorry, of orcs, some of dwarves. It, it's actually very varied. Uh, looking around, you can see goblins. Uh, How I, fresh it, do they look? Very, very, very old. Like very okay. old. Yeah, but by no means do these things look uh, uh, look fresh. Gravin so. will mention all the things as he sees them. Okay. He's like, oh, that looks like orc head. <laughs> oh, that looks like leg of. Dwarf. <laughs> Leg of dwarf. But it's a delicious <laughs> meal. Leg of dwarf. <laughs> um, so you, uh, again, it's not one of those things where you can really um, uh, identify like a whole skeleton like that. It's just like little pieces here and there. And as um, Maggie was just saying, kind of identifying little bits. Uh, kind of looking around because, I mean, you guys are kind of have this mindset. You do see there are bits of like weapons and armor and stuff like that lying around on the grounds. But all of them are are just like old, ancient, falling apart. Like, yeah, I'm sure this was a sword at one point in time, but now it's half a half, and who knows where the rest of the blade is. I will be a willing to let you guys make for me a um, investigation check at disadvantage. Um, each one of you guys can do it. At disadvantage, you said? Uh, absolutely. Not my greatest rule. No, nothing. Okay. Um, so all of you guys, oh, wait, I'm missing one. That's right. Uh, disadvantage perception, right? Uh, nope. Uh, investigation, please, sir. Investigation. All right, 13. All right, there you go, 13. So you guys looking around and whatnot, again, you find nothing of value here. There's no gold here. There's no no anything that you can find. And you continue traveling around this, in, in this entire first day. Finally comes to that evening and you have to kind of make your plans to spend the night again. Uh, you've made uh, a good amount of distance. And so like, do you intend to keep the same format? How it is that you want to sleep? Do you want to change things up? Like what's, what's your opinion here? Hmm. Uh, hang on. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm good, same, like... I'm good with keeping the same format. Yeah. Grauman's fairly comfortable with this. I mean, he is a bone warrior. Dwarf, I mean, orc, so. yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, he that's awesome. So oddly comfortable, mm -hmm. although something feels weird, you know. So. so keeping the same format of what it is that you guys want to do, um, could you roll for me again a D four there, Mathis? Um, Okay, three. So once again, it's Grauman. It's on Grauman's uh, part of the night that uh, Grauman's just kind of sitting there and it's super, super quiet uh, and and things just really start to flare up. As a matter of fact, they start to get uh, so loud at one point in time that Grauman can hear it clearly. Everybody else is still sleep, sleeping. Grauman can hear it clearly, but more clearly than that is the Grauman's bird. Uh, your bird does not is not happy right now. Roll for me that um, handle animal check to try to keep the bird with you. This is not advantage. This is normal. Yeah, I rolled normal. Okay. Uh, your seven-handed animal check. You try to calm the bird down and convince it to stay, but sadly, you just cannot do so, and the bird ends up just, like, piecing out, just, like, uh, flies out of there in fear. Um, you imagine it'll come back to you eventually, but no. it cannot stay in this chasm. It is way too afraid to continue staying Very here. fancy feathers. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that being said, you are um, kind of, like, left alone. Um, 
because Thonk was the only one who could hear it, mm -hmm. Robin's gonna wake him up first. Sure. So you go over and wake up Thonk? Yeah. I wake up. Uh, again, but this time I don't really look at you in confusion uh, like I did at Otto. I actually just, after I'm awake, sit up and immediately uh, kind of seem on edge and start listening. Okay. And so. The sound. It rattling. Thonk nods. And it is exactly that. It is um, significantly louder uh, this time around. You can you can definitely hear it. As uh, now you can actually hear that rattling uh, that's going on. And both of you guys can make out during one of those points where it gets louder. But it sounds like the rattling of bones, okay. uh, almost. And this sounds significantly closer. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, both of you roll for me a perception check. But uh, just because of how high your um, uh, sorry, both of you roll me a perception check, and both of you guys can actually roll me a uh, with advantage because I know you're going to spend a considerable amount of time listening for it. 20 for me. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that you're able to, to hear with this uh, thonk is that the sound isn't just coming ahead of you like it did before. The sound also sounds like it's coming from behind you, but it does not sound like it's coming from the immediate area that you're in. But it's coming from behind us? From where behind we came you. from? from where you came from as well as where it is that you're heading. But it, both of them sounds to be a distance away. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't really know what to do with that information other than just be on edge. Uh, I can't do much. That I will lay that, I relay that to Grumman, but I would suggest we leave Otto and Rai asleep because they're not going to be too much help unless we they, they come under attack. We come under attack. So Grumman? Relax. If you would like, you can roll a, um, a survival check for me. Okay. Ooh, natural 20. Oh, God, that's amazing. So you get every detail that I have to offer. So um, one of the things that Grami realizes when he describes this, like this battle's ahead, and it sounds like it's a battle ahead and battle behind. Well, I mean, one of the reasons why you specifically chose this spot for you guys to spend the night tonight is because this is a, a great spot that seems to be out of the way. It seems to be um, uh, removed from a lot of the area that um, things would happen. There's a lot of like big open areas with different level terrain and whatnot all around you uh, where a battle could easily be had, where battle very easily could be had uh, behind you. As a matter of fact, there's one not too far behind you, maybe about a um, quarter mile sorry, quarter uh, hour of an hour travel back, like 15 minutes um, travel back, you came across one. Um, and there was definitely like a great spot where battle could happen. There were a lot of bones that were littered there. But the spot that you're in right now, the pathways are a little bit too narrow for that kind of warfare to happen. And you imagine there's probably a similar situation like that uh, ahead of you too. So whatever the sounds might be, it's very likely that it's taking place at the spot behind you and that area where there was a battle beforehand. It was strange. Um, I guess I kind of chat. This is small talk with Thonk. <laughs> Last time he did that, he tried to make you cut yourself. That's true. He did. Maybe he'll try to make me cut myself again. We'll find out. <laughs> uh, so um, Grauman's kind of like sitting there with Thonk while we're listening. Mm -hmm. Maybe we, like each of us are listening a different way. Um, and he remembers that he saw that opening. He's like, you remember that opening with all them bones, I think that'd be a good place to battle. How far back was that? Oh, maybe, well, do we calculate time in hours? Is that a thing? I mean, to, to, to some degree, I imagine Grauman is not very good at it anyways, but you could, you know, translate it to him well enough and he would be able to just understand you. He has a high insight and you guys know each other very well. Okay. Grumman's like trying to calculate how far away it is. And he's like, far, <laughs> far enough. <laughs> the, the noises seem to only come out at night. Uh, thus far, this time, they seems to come out, they seem to come out, or at least you guys seem to notice them, like late, late at night, like in the middle of the night. And last time, it only happened once so far, it seems to subside like early in the morning. Yeah, that's what I figured. It's really not early in the morning, late in the morning. I, I, my apologies, not early, very late in the morning. When did we see him? Like, what time was it when we first heard it? I mean, if you had to guess, probably somewhere around like 3 a.m. Or, or, or something That's like that when you first heard it last time. And it's around that same time today. You don't have clocks on you, but about that. <laughs> yeah, okay. 
Thong kind of thinks about the like the, the statement Grumman made of like it'd be a good place to fight. And uh, after mulling it over, he kind of furrows his brow a bit and says, "If but if they are undead, they'll just be back again the night after. If the bones on the grounds are coming back, like real quiet for some reason for me. Me? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Do I sound okay now? Yeah. Okay." Uh, no, he just, he, he, uh, again, he says, like, if, if they are, if it is undead and the bones are rising from the ground and reliving past battle or something, then us fighting them could do very little in the way of stopping them from coming back the night after. If there's a, uh, ne necromancer around causing the issues, that's a totally different story and we need to cut it off at the source. Maybe there are two of them. And one is on this side, <laughs> and one is on that side, and they are going to battle. And if that's the case, uh, <laughs> Thong shakes his head. I wish them the best of luck. It's none of my business. But wouldn't it be cool to see? <laughs> and dangerous. <laughs> wouldn't it oh, be cool? yeah, that's true. <laughs> I say we give it another night. If it continues to grow closer by tomorrow eve, then we do something about it. But we can't keep waking up Otto and Rye. They need their rest. That's right. That's yeah. right. They get cranky when they no sleep. And they're u and they're useless. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so you guys decide to uh, leave the party alone, and the two of you what stay awake and uh, and listen for things, or do one of you guys decide to go back to sleep, or how do you, how do you do this one? Uh, I think we just take our normal. Go back to our normal rotation. I guess Thonk will probably go back to sleep. Yeah, I say I say we try to just go back to an, our whatever our normal rotation was going to be. Okay. And go from there. And you just kind of like uh, pass out, pass out in that spot or whatever. Okay, cool. So you guys are um, uh, are able to continue traveling the next day. You guys get up. Uh, you, you're welcome to explain this to uh, the rest of the party. Feel free to RP it if you want. If you're good, we can just move on. I mean, I'll yeah. let them know, mm -hmm. like of the noises. And, but other than that, I'm not going to be like... Does Grauman tell me about his theory of it being two of them? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Otto's while all about that While shit. we're walking to, like, the next, like, our next day night, like, yeah. I of what I'm thinking while I'm, like, using my walking stick to, like... Oh, yeah. Things. Otto is so into it. He's starting to, like, create different scenarios with Grom and like, oh yeah, and then they get they get together and they start to raise armies of the undead and they're combating each other with armies. It'd be so cool. We gotta stay. Oh yeah. And they and they make and they make flames with other with other colors. Yeah. Oh that'd be so cool. Right, can you do that? <laughs> Rise asleep. <laughs> Wait, you're walking in a sleep? She's asleep on the horse. Oh you're asleep on the horse. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, so uh, you guys are having your fun little conversation, talking about all that stuff or whatever, and, and Ry's just sitting there passed out. So the, the next day you guys continue traveling. Um, I'm sure Thonk first would notice, but everybody would notice eventually that, um, uh, was it Fancy Feathers, is missing. Oh, he's still missing? Uh-oh. Yeah. Does anybody uh, uh, bring that to light or chat about that? Or are you good? Thonk? I think at some point during the time that we're traveling, whenever I'm feeling like we're fine. Mm -hmm. I might try to see if he can see through the bird's eyes again. Um, and sadly, because uh, I believe it, it requires touch to be able to do that initially, you will not be able to do so. You just be able to touch it before you can even. Yeah. So that is a, that is definitely a no go. Um. Okay. So as you guys are traveling on uh, and uh, making your way as much as you can, you do actually see ahead, uh, Maggie, exactly what your your grommet had expected. There is a area that uh, looks as though it would have been wonderful for battle uh, a bit ahead of where you guys um, were, like, so where it is that you're going. And so kind of keeping that in mind, I know you are, guys are going to want to try to find another spot that's going to be safe to spend the night tonight. You know, if I want to find a, an area that's a bit safer. Uh, the problem is, as you guys are traveling on and traveling, so it's getting later and later and later, all of a sudden, the, the sounds uh, start 
way earlier than they did before. As a matter of fact, it's like around sunset is happening and you're trying to find that safe spot. You're kind of like coming up to an area that maybe would have been a safe spot. And as you're doing so, those sounds are immediately kicking up around you. So you can you can hear the sound of combat ahead. And as you're kind of like warily traveling forward and trying to like find out where it is that, okay, maybe we can stop here, whatever the case may be. Finally, you get to a point where you're like, no, we can, it is definitely pretty nearby where we're able to, to, to hear the stuff is happening. Um, you're fully aware of the fact that combat is, whatever it is, is happening way, uh, not very far ahead of where your characters are. And um, how do you role play through that? Hearing the sounds, and I'm assuming we'll all stop short uh, hearing it, I actually look to Rai, and I, uh, I kind of give like a, a small gesture to, to your little friend there. Send your dog ahead, see what he can see. Otto puts his hand to his ear again. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> it's like standing over the battle. <laughs> oh, you hear it now? See, I know crazy. Yeah, no, I, I got it. I got it. Rai's kind of confused, and she's like, I don't have a dog. <laughs> Thunk, very... Uh, the, person, the person next to you lets out a, a little bit of a growl. <laughs> With the growl, Thunk says, seems like you do. I'm not going to send him on his own. Let's all go. Does he mean that much to you? Make him prove no, his just, worth. What has he done for us stupid. other than... What has he done for us other than eat our rations and drink our water? Earn his keep. Send him forward. Oh, come on now, Thunk. <laughs> Right, just send you forward alone either. So, uh, actually, yeah, yeah, actually. So, when she, when he, uh, Thong says he doesn't do anything other than eat our rations and drink our water, he actually, like, uh, again, uh, kind of like snaps back at uh, Thong and says, um, I've only eaten and drinking what has been offered to me. I am more than capable of hunting what it is that I need and far more capable than you. I don't have to uh, kneel pathetically before any um, uh, any evil creature to, to get what I need to, uh, to, to, to have. It, it, no, I, I can provide for myself. And all that's kind of like water. leaning in, like, <laughs> yeah. he's like leaning in, like wanting to, to, to fight Thonk, almost like forgetting uh, and you what happened see a Thonk, few days ago. If, if you're like, if you're intently looking at Thonk, like a, a flicker of, of joy kind of flits across his eyes and he, mm -hmm. and he kind of looks at him and says, and the only reason you're getting food and water is because your new master has decided to take you along with us. Now. Oh, not his master, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> We all completely undermining him. There's yeah. another battle happening, and this this is not good. Grom and the voice of reason. <laughs> I know, huh? It's he awesome. He doesn't want to get murdered because you guys are all bickering with each other. Yeah, with, with that happening, though, he does turn over to to Rye and say, "I I could actually go and and see what's happening up ahead. Uh, he is uh, incompetent, but." I do have a light foot. I mean, if you want to go, go because you want to, not because he told you to. <laughs> I, I can, I can go ahead and and see what's happening. Um, I'm just gonna stop him with his like, put his hand on his shoulder and look at him and say, "Are you really wolf?" Uh, he kind of like looks at Gramin questioningly, like, like what? <laughs> You literally saw him turn into a wolf like two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> Roman's going to pull out a little wolf uh, creature and see if he can see sure, through sure. his eyes. Um, It does not work. Hmm. Um, For a few reasons. Um, <laughs> but but it does not work. Okay. Grauman chomps on the on the wood, wooden uh, wolf and says... <laughs> He no really wolf. Um, and so he just kind of like looks at Grom and perplexed because it's one of those things where he wants to respect Gramin because Gramin is like a good warrior and he saw the shadow uh, of a wolf on Gramin. However, Gramin is an orc and it's kind of really stupid. And so it's like really hard to, to respect Gramin. <laughs> but but Gramin does it, seem to know where he's going at all points in times. And so he does respect that. But Gramin also makes a bunch of terrible decisions that a halfling has to correct. And so once again, he's just like, oh man, like, buddy, I'm trying to like you here. I'm trying, but you make it really hard. Um, so he will actually, in fact, go ahead 
and um, he's going to make his way up ahead and um, uh, he disappears for probably about 10 minutes or so. When he uh, um, when he gets out of sight, uh, Thonk just takes a couple steps up and like stands next to Rai and just kind of says, good boy. Rai just rolls her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he does rush ahead. He's gone for about 10 minutes or so. And when he comes rushing back, he does look to be like, it looks like he sprinted his way back from, you know, wherever it was that he came. And he's he's kind of standing there panting and out of breath. And and with that, we're actually going to take our first break. And when we come back, we can uh, see what it was that the uh, Axel the Slayer has uh, has witnessed. And I'm going to try to fix my Twitch. Sounds good. Thank you guys so much. We'll be back. Axel the Slayer, hopefully he can slay. Or he yeah. gets slayed. Slay oh, queen. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, that was the next <laughs> yeah. logical step. Slay. We'll be back in five minutes. Grab a drink, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 